Hello and welcome to our pre-match show ahead of our game against Coventry City. To look at this one, we're going to do something a little bit different. But joining us is Danny Schofield, B-team coach, and Lee Meller, head of academy recruitment, and Stephen Chicken from the Huddersfield Examiner. Are you all OK? Very well, thank you. Yeah, very Thanks. good, thank you. Excellent. Danny, obviously you're, you're at the hotel now ahead of the game against Coventry so we won't keep you too long I know that um, game days are pretty relentless for you guys and um, obviously Coventry tonight they'll be a difficult opposition won't they seven games unbeaten they've really found their style of play now yeah definitely I think um, it, it's a bit of a cliche to it say every every game's tough in the championship but it is with watched a lot of the Coventry City games and analysed a lot of the games and they've got a clear identity and a way of playing. So, um, yeah, it makes for a, a good challenge, I think. What's changed there? Um, I think he's had the players for quite a long time now. They've continued momentum from promotion from last season, from League One to the Championship. So this always helps the, helps the teams. Um, and I think just a real clear style and players have got clear roles and responsibilities. So I think, um, I think that makes for, for a good team when you have this, this in place. Absolutely. Steve, it'll be a real challenge, won't it? Yeah, they're, they're one of the informed teams in the Championship at the moment. I think their last defeat was before the last international break. Um, so, you know, they're not winning every week, but they've, been, they've made themselves extremely... Difficult to beat, which I think is all you can ask for as a as a newly promoted side in particular. So yeah, uh, potentially a tricky one on sort of their own turf. Yeah, and obviously the the result uh, last week against um, AFC Bournemouth, Danny wasn't the one that we wanted, um, but equally it gave us an opportunity to to kind of rest and and refresh a number of. Uh, regular first team players and thinking the likes of Pippa, Carol Iting. How important do you think that could be going into this one? Yeah, I think this this season's um, a, a one-off season almost in terms of the intensity and the regularity of the games coming thick and fast. So we've had lots of discussions over sort of the planning of games, the preparation of games, which players will play the part in certain games. And Bournemouth was a was a really tough challenge for us. I thought they they were probably the best team we've played against. There's some really good players and um, a challenge a challenge we found difficult at times. But I thought there were a lot of positives from the game. And one key thing I want to mention is every time we have had a defeat, we've sort of bounced back. We've never really lost the games on the bounce. So I think the spirit in the camp's really good. We've reflected, we've analysed on the game. Um, and I think the players who were rested are, are ready to go for the game tonight against Coventry. That'll be the key thing, won't it, Steve? The getting getting those players back, a hundred percent fitness, going into what is again going to be a very busy Christmas period. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's there's a few key injuries, but you've just got to grit your teeth and get past it. We we're in a similar sort of position last year, where there were, you know, a little bit. Um, perhaps not playing the first 11 that you would have liked to, to have been able to play, but they still had actually a good run of results. Um, and, and December ended up being, despite everything, one of one of town's best periods last season. So it's just, uh, you know, you've got to find the solutions and where it's, uh, where it's not ideal perhaps to, to not have your first 11. It is also an opportunity for other players to, to step up and, and show what they can do. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's absolutely an opportunity, especially for the, the younger guys. We saw Aaron Rowe obviously come in uh, against Bournemouth. Meller, obviously, uh, the, the academy players, you, you know them really well from your time at the club. We'll, we'll go into the ins and outs of academy recruitment a little bit later on. But in terms of this, when the young players get that opportunity, how proud are you, first of all, in the role that you've played to get them into the club and then and then to help them progress into that first team setup. Yeah, yeah, hugely proud. I the boys are do you know what I mean they're all they see a real opportunity now. So they they're earning them themselves really. They're they're working hard and now they see the lads getting in, they just work even harder. So like they're uh, they're really pleased. Yeah and Danny they obviously go through you as well. Um, 
through the B team. You worked with loads of them last year in your role in, in the academy as well. On a match day, you're kind of their, their main liaison, aren't you? You you do the, most of the talking to, to them, where they need to be, what they need to improve on, the younger lads. Yeah, I think I've mentioned this a few times, Adam. Uh, the, the alignment's really clear um, from the first team all the way down to the under-17s. Um, I think the messages, the language, um, we, we as coaches and as, and as support staff just try and give the players the best opportunity possible. And I think that is down to the messages, down to it being clear, explaining um, whether it's video work or on the, on the, on the field, what, what the roles and responsibilities are, what the demands are of the first team manager. And then hopefully this transition can be a little, a little smoother. It's always difficult to get players into the first team and playing regularly. But I think Uddersfield Town is a place where young players will get opportunity. And if I were a young player now, which I never will be ever again, <laughs> I, um, this is this is certainly the place I'd want to be in terms of having that, seeing that pathway. Because I think that's a big thing. I think the players need to sense that there is a path to the first team, and I think that's certainly um, certainly being created. You could see Steve at the FA Youth Cup game last night that the young lads were trying to play in the same way that Carlos's first team play. Yeah, set up in the four three three. Um, I thought that there was. Some really good performances all round. They just needed the the finishing was was all that let them down. I thought that they were firmly on top of Newcastle and, um, but yeah, you, as you say, you can see that the same style is there. You've got the same sort of um, adventure coming out from the back. You've got the defensive midfielder who's expected to be uh, sort of that linchpin and and helping to build the attacks from the back. And you've got three very busy, energetic forwards in the forward line there. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's very similar, and you can see that through line from B team and under 18s even all the way up to the first team. Yeah, you were there as well, Danny. What what did you make of the game? Yeah, I thought it was really impressive. I thought again some indiv- some really good individual performances. Um, I felt for long periods of the game we were the better team. We dominated the ball. Um, we tried to attack um, with the similar patterns as the first team do. Um, I just thought, I agree with what Steve says. I think um, th- those final moments, them killer moments in the attacking half um, in the penalty box were lacking. Uh, but no, lots of positives to take from the performance. Um, but yeah, disappointing result at the end. Yeah, and I know you have to, to head off in just a second, Danny, but just give us a bit of a flavour of what happens on the morning of a match day for, for yourself as coaches, but also for the players as well. Um, well, f- for this... For the evening games, away to Coventry, um, we, we'll be staying over in the hotel and the players will travel down um, on the evening before, um, wake, wake early for breakfast, have a mobility session with the strength and conditioning coaches and then there'll be individual meetings, collective meetings, just sort of refreshing the players on the work that's gone into the week in order to perform um, against Coventry and hopefully, hopefully get a win. Yeah, they're relentless, aren't they, the meetings? Yeah, very intense. Um, like I said, there's lots of individual meetings, one to one with the with different coaches. Um, there's, there's there's opposition meetings, so this will this will predominantly be one of the first meetings on the strengths and weakness of the opponent, how we can exploit their weaknesses, how can we stop their strengths, and then tactical meetings, which is um, obviously built up in terms of how we're going to play with the ball and without the ball. Um, the, the the main principles never really change. They're just because we have a clear identity of how we want to play. It's just certain tweaks based on what the opposition is that we're going to face. Yeah, absolutely. Danny, we'll, we'll let you uh, head off and, and go and have uh, the, the meeting with Carlos. Thank you very much for joining us. OK, cheers, Adam. Thanks, gents. No problem. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. Uh, Mella, we'll, we'll go back on to that FA Youth Cup game. Obviously, you were there. You, you played a, a role in, in terms of getting a large majority of, of those players into the club's academy. How pleased are you in terms of how far they've come on and, and developed? Because, again, Newcastle last night, a Category 1 academy, a Premier League side, and they went toe-to-toe and, if not, had the better chances to win the game. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're all delighted at the development and, and the performance. Obviously, the result was disappointing in the end, but, like you said, Newcastle are a Cat 1 academy. They're supposed to be one of the best 20 or so academies in the country and 
we were we were the better team. Like in reality, we were the better team for most of that game. One v one all over the pitch, really, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Boss them so. Yeah, you could see that, Steve, couldn't you? I mean, we we spoke and Danny spoke about the chances you mentioned earlier. It was just lacking that that final finish. There was some really good individual performances there as well, wasn't there? Yeah, I thought Etienne Kamara start to finish was was sort of head and shoulders. Um, he was uh, playing as, as the number six and he was absolutely running the game for, from that position in both on and off the ball. And then I thought particularly second half, Brahima Diara stepped up as well and showed some really bright uh, phases and played a couple of through balls that, that just needed the finish that we talked about. There was even a bit where he went on a run and did a... Uh, a Marseille roulette, which is uh, not something you see in every every under 18s <laughs> game. So, um, yeah, but but others as well. Um, you know, Miles Bright had had uh, had flashes, and yeah, there was uh, so, so, some promising stuff there. To be fair, yeah, Mel, the, Danny mentioned it earlier. There's a there's a clear alignment, isn't there, through the academy from from the first team all the way down. For for you in in your role. How much easier does that make it to recruit the right players to bring in and put into that process? Because ultimately, I would presume through this, you know exactly the type of player that, that we want in each position. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it makes everything so simple. Um, there's lists of, sorry, eight to ten characteristics per position. You can see a player for one or two games and you can pretty much, to know whether he's going to fit us, fit our style. A lot of the time you see a player and he might be playing in a different position and you're like, do you know what? He's for us, but not in that position. It, it makes it so so simple and so clear and it's the clearest it's ever been, really. That, that's really interesting, actually, because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't um, Brody Spencer, who played it right back, come in originally as a, a midfielder in the summer and Connor yeah. Falls, who was a winger, was playing up front last night. It shows basically what you, what your point was just then. Yeah, absolutely. Brody was like a, a box to box number eight, um, but we always knew he was going to be a right back for us. Um, we get a lot of a lot of wingers that come in, and we know straight away they're going to be full backs for us, uh, just the way we play. The actually we move sort of some defenders into midfield rather than the other way around. So, so yeah, yeah. It makes it really clear. Yeah, you could see that with Aaron Rowe as well, Steve. Obviously, he was a, a right winger um, on the main. He made his debut at right wing, but over the last couple of years, um, he, he's been playing at right back. Yeah, it's a transition, quite a, a well worn road that from going from being a winger to being a full back. Um, and as you say, played against Bournemouth, and unfortunately, that game didn't go to plan. Uh, I believe Jaden Brown was similar as well at Spurs, started out as a, a winger and, and dropped back to full back and is sort of now the last couple of games sort of gone back the other way. And I think you have to be versatile in football. I don't think there's many players out there um, who who can't play a couple of different positions. Even at very elite level, you, you'll find that, that certain players need to fill in and do a job somewhere. And I think especially when you're a young player coming through, sometimes you need to be willing and able to, to step into whatever role is available. You're not necessarily going to get a chance in your preferred position. You think about Romani Evans Green playing at Charlton last year um, at right back and, and taking that chance. And uh, there's plenty of other players as well. You know, you think Steven Gerrard came through playing at right back kind of thing uh, at Liverpool originally. So you do need to have that that versatility and that ability to play multiple different roles. Yeah, and you can see that in the way that the academy works as well, Mellor. I mean, how many times has a midfielder been been moved into centre half to give them different challenges? I think if I'm if I'm right, Brahim has played almost every role apart from a, a goalkeeper in academy games to expose yeah. different elements of his matches. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's one of the, one of the philosophies, and it's something that Carlos wants himself. When you look at people like Toffolo, who can play in midfield, they can play left wing back, left back, left centre half. They, it's one of those key things. And yeah, we move players around to get gift, different 
different technical and different physical outputs from them for whatever they might need to develop in the future. So, yeah, the, the whole concept, I think, and Steve probably agrees with me that it is really interesting. Um, in, in terms of the role as head of academy recruitment, uh, just talk to us about that and, and the details surrounding that. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm responsible for recruitment from under 17 when we start into the B team. Um, majority of the work is normally under 17s because we have to recruit a whole new group every year. Um, so there's a lot of time and effort put into that. Um, but then we do we do have the select few B team signings like the D'Amico De Haney's, Jaden Browns, which may be players that are coming for a different pathway from top clubs. Or there may, there may be ones that we take from from lower clubs that we feel have got a lot a lot of potential. So, how do you find those under seventeens? Because again, like this year, they've they've come from a plethora of different areas, some from London, some locally. How do you unearth those talents? Yeah, there's a a lot of work goes into it. There's a lot of um, there's a big network of people that we speak to and and that support us with this sort of stuff um we get some lads that are released from other clubs um couples so we had a couple of boys from northern ireland that played last night a few from paris uh, we sort of recruit anywhere since the change has been made we're lucky to have accommodation available um for for the boys so we recruit we recruit heavily from london like paris We've got a boy from Sweden, one from Holland, two Australians. It's sort of global now, really. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic that Steve, isn't it? That kind of the the net's been been widened, and it allows us then to help get more players into the first team. I think since the academy change, there's been 15 academy players or players that have come through the academy make their professional debut for the club. Yeah, I think that was the whole point to begin with, wasn't it? Because yeah. Huddersfield's catchment. Obviously, you've got sort of Leeds to one side and Manchester to the other, and it makes it uh, very difficult to to attract players who who maybe don't have their heart necessarily set on playing for Huddersfield Town and who aren't Huddersfield Town fans, you know, from from, uh, from childhood. So, I thought think that was the whole point was to allow that that recruitment to take that focus and and look out for and not even just sort of you know. London and Paris and Australia, but also looking at, you know, likes of, of Matty Daly, who, who you know, was, was slipped through the cracks at Everton or Jaden Brown, similar story at, at Tottenham, and give them somewhere to, to get an opportunity without having to go through, you know, eight loan spells um, to, to, to get that chance. That's the real difference here, I think, isn't it? It's the, the fact that players can see an opportunity instead of going on loan or eight loan spells, like you said there. They could come here. They, they might be a backup for uh, half a season, but they, they know that their chance will eventually come. Yeah, and I think that's that's something that's very important to the club. When, when I spoke to, to Lee and to Phil Hodgkinson uh, at, at the, towards after the transfer window shut, they, they were talking about the fact that, that they intentionally were letting the squads run a bit thin in places so that you have your, your two first choices and then if it runs any thinner than that then you have an opportunity for a young player rather than bringing in someone on on loan from a Premier League club and developing them on behalf of the Premier League club or bringing in a you know a 33 year old on a six month contract to, to, to fill in and do a job I think when with that approach you're going to have certain certain teething pains with it and you're going to have games where um, there's going to be times where if there is a particular pileup of injuries, you're going to end up with probably more than you might like necessarily playing in the first team together. Um, but I think that, that longer term, it should should hopefully pay dividends. That's the idea anyway. Yeah. Um, so, and I think it's it's interesting the way that they've they've slotted in alongside a few from the old academy system as well. So we've seen Ryan Schofield and, and Lewis O'Brien have come through from from the, the previous academy setup and have really, obviously Lewis in particular, established themselves um, as regulars in the, the first team match day squad. So it's uh, it seems not to have been at their their cost that that this change has, has been made. Yeah, but even those two, Mother, I mean, 
they, they've been, Ryan in particular, has been on countless loan spells to gain that first team experience. And to be fair, if Lewis hadn't have performed so well at Bradford and, and got that opportunity in the first place, he probably wouldn't be where he is today. No, yeah, absolutely. Loans is still a, an important bit, but it, now we have opportunity. We can be really specific with the loans. We can target specific clubs that are going to fit the style. Um, get them that full experience. Like Jaden went on loan to Exeter yeah. um, and didn't actually play, but that brought him on as a person, leaps and bounds. And then the season after he played, what was it, about 20 starts, went straight off the back in the, in the yeah. championship, um, which I don't think he would have been able to do without the disappointment and the reality of going to Ex um, Exeter first. Yeah, he's yeah. talked about that. He's saying that it made him really hungry and made him realise that, that football isn't all sort of glamour and, you know, and all of these things and, and was a bit of a, a reality check for him, I think. And we've seen that, that Jaden's really determined. I think he's, he's very unlucky that he's sort of the one young player who's playing in, a, in the position where Toffs is starting pretty much every game. Um, and he's, he's made a good fist of, of playing on the wing now that that opportunity's come. Again, didn't, didn't go so great for anyone on Saturday, but I thought when he came on against Sheffield Wednesday, he looked really good, really bright. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the key to this system. I mean, equally, we've, we've mentioned, or Steve, you mentioned Etienne Kamara um, a little bit earlier. Obviously, he, he joined um, this, well, I say this summer, only a few months ago, really, from, from uh, Angers. How do you find someone like Etienne Kamara? Because if I don't say so myself, I thought he was absolutely outstanding against Newcastle last night. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was brilliant. And like you said, he's only been here two months or so. And part of that, he was in isolation because he moved up from France. So it's even less, really. Um, but Etienne was one we've, we've known about for a long time. We actually tried to sign him before he went to Angers. Um, previously, when he was at his more amateur club. Um, and then it's not worked out for him where he went. And luckily, he still had us in, us in mind. And we knew he was the right fit for us. He just fits our philosophy, our, our um, position as a six or an eight. And we just knew he, he would fit in perfectly. So, How sure do you have to be about those players um, from abroad? Obviously, uh, we've got Etienne, the, the other French guys, Brahima and, and Loic Aina. But you mentioned uh, Gully Zunder earlier as well. Um, how sure do we have to be to, to bring those away from their families, away from their home country to, to a new club to try and have a, a fist at being a professional footballer? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of work goes in behind it. Um, you have to be really sure, but the boys all want to come. They, they all see this as a massive opportunity. They, they see the end, the end bit, possibly playing in the championship or even better. Um, so they're, they're all really happy to come and we meet the families, get a good idea of where they come from and try and get as much due diligence done on the boys as we can, really. Yeah, I think one thing that's for certain, Steve, is that um, I don't know if you've recognised this, but when the, the 17s and the younger lads have been talking, they, they say how close they think the club is and, and how everyone at the, the club makes them feel welcome. I think you can see that in the academy players. Even last night with the disappointment, they, they still had their heads held high and and they felt like they were part of something here. Yeah, the, there's obviously a, a culture at the club that that is that they're trying to engender, and that is is as important as as anything on the pitch. You know, as we've seen here, you talk to anyone at the club, and they'll say that 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 is very much part of the philosophy, and you, you don't want to have um, you don't want to have passengers or people who don't care or people who whatever issues it might be and yeah it's uh it's clearly a, a cornerstone of, of that policy yeah and another interesting one Mello, is away from kind of the the larger recruitment um that, that we do for the under 17s is evander grubb i think he was the youngest ever goal scorer in fa cup history it's easy to say oh we saw that and we we brought him in but it's more than just that isn't it yeah, yeah, he'd, he'd actually been in two weeks before um, and played in a, a game that we had up at, at Canal Side. Um, 
we knew about him then and he was one that we were waiting to invite him for trial thinking wait for the right opportunity and then two weeks later he scores in the FA Cup it's out in the papers everybody so then he was oh we're gonna have to act a bit quicker here get on the phone yep can you come in get him in week after and then we went from there really yeah it's, it's crazy how things can just change at a click of a finger isn't it in football yeah yeah you've, al- you've always got to just be aware and have that backup plan just in case just in case something out of the ordinary like this happens so yeah we, we spoke about players fitting a specific role or a specific system in terms of characteristics of young players and, and personality what do you look for there? Because obviously that's a massive part of the recruitment as well. They have to fit the ethos, like like Steve mentioned earlier, the ethos, the agenda, the way the club wants to go. Yeah, yeah. So we, we call those the non-negotiables and that that's for everybody. That That's for all the players, no matter what position they are. And those are the basic things, the, the, the attitude to work hard, the desire to sprint in the 90th minute, 90th minute um, all these things that you can see now when Carlos... Carlos puts his teams out there. They, they never say die attitude and they're, they're sprinting no matter what, winning the ball back and running in behind whenever they get the opportunity. That, that's the first thing, isn't it, that they work on when they come into the building? Yeah, absolutely. We call it the emotion block and it, it is those. It's the it's the, the hard work. There's, there's basically no free kicks in training for the first month. You've just got to get <laughs> up and get on with it. It does get to points where you're like, we might have to control this, but yeah, that that real emotion, getting up to the ball, pressing, the the bits that people don't generally don't like to do when they are when they're 15, 16 year old playing football. So it's a difficult first few weeks, that Steve, isn't it? Yeah, very rigorous. Uh, I think it's <laughs> I think it's kind of a, a welcome to to a professional club, that isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Obviously now um, Brexit could be uh, a game changer in terms of academy recruitment. Um, When when that goes through, we we might not be able to find the likes of Etienne or or Brahima, for example, and and bring them over. How does that change things for you, Mello? Yeah, it's going to be a big change. Um, So the, the EU passports don't really count for anything now. It's going to be really difficult to do quite a few under 18s, but it will still be possible and it, it will open up other markets because effectively um, it doesn't matter whether it's Europe or South America, everybody's on the same rule now. So if you find a player that fits fits the criteria that can enter the country, it doesn't matter whether he's, he's playing in Brazil or Argentina or he's playing in, in France, really. So, How much time do you spend going to different countries or watching different games to find that right player even like you said there it's South America for example yeah there's lots of video work um, initially and then and then you do get the opportunity to travel not at the minute obviously with Covid but yeah. you do get the opportunity to uh, to travel they're generally pretty difficult like go out to France you might go out to France on Saturday morning and fly back Saturday night and go and watch three games in a day and come back sort of thing um, but, but yeah, it's it's great to great to go out to other countries, experience the culture w- with the, the time you get there, and and yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can't complain, I suppose. You can't complain. No. no. <laughs> Steve, we've we've touched upon the um, the youth cup game last night, but just just going back onto that, obviously to to lose five three on on penalties was really difficult for the young lads to take but equally it could be a really good experience for them couldn't it they they knew the chances that they had but they had to play 120 minutes and penalties at the John Smith Stadium go through all the emotions further down the line the the guys that do progress into the first team at Huddersfield Town or a first team elsewhere they I'm sure they'll always remember that experience and how that felt yeah, that's the whole point, isn't it? And and they quite intentionally set up these tournaments, um, both at club level and international level, to try and mirror the kind of experience that you would have in senior football. Um, you know, it's it'd be easy to say, well, why don't they just go straight to penalties? It's only the youth cup. But that's the whole idea is that you have the experience of having played a period of extra time. And I think as well, it's more than more than that because you know you 
you, you you're preparing your body to be in tip top shape regardless and um you would expect to be able to go that that 120 minutes but it's also just the 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 experience of dealing with that particular flavor of disappointment obviously football is full of disappointments no team goes and wins every game but i think to have had um you know the, there's no harsher way to go out than on penalties really so i think it's it's that mental side knowing that learning that resilience that that is going to stand the players in good stead yeah you said Mallor earlier that, that you were really proud the academy staff are really proud of of how they play do you expect the players to be a little bit more today obviously there was the immediate disappointment last night yeah as, as the days get on i think they'll get they'll get prouder but they're uh they'll still be pretty disappointed right now i think and you know what it's like when you're 16 17 year old it's probably the one of the worst things that's ever happened to them so they're uh, they'll be pretty disappointed for the next few days i would imagine yeah we, we've touched upon the the performance quite heavily but uh, again the the individual guys i mean we've, we've mentioned brahima and, and etienne but pat jones is someone that's that stood out obviously he was on the score sheet last night he'd only just come back from injury and he's been performing really well in the b team games as well hasn't he Mella? yeah yeah he's um he's doing really well he's another one that came a little bit later he's only been in the program sort of one and a half years rather than the sort of full two years that he would have been um taken from wrexham um when they they sort of closed their academy um so we took him from wrexham and he's just he's electric quick he's he's a real athlete um i'm sure he's got a bright future yeah i think there's there's a number that we could see steve that with this system and the, the program that we're in that that have bright futures hopefully at huddersfield town yeah you would hope so and i mean there's a, an opportunity for a winger there potentially um and and i know pat was involved in the first team squad in pre-season but so who knows but especially after we saw brahima come on against bournemouth but no i mean it's uh i think people sometimes forget just how how young those players are and that the ones that that do come through as teenagers are are the exception rather than the rule um, at, at pretty much every level of the game. And you've got to give people time and, and give them the opportunity if they do come through to the first team to, to make mistakes, get the learning in and, um, and, and push on from there. But it's, it's uh, yeah, there's certainly a few exciting prospects there. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, Mella, thank you for giving us such a great insight into the recruitment into the academy. Steve, thank you as always for joining us. Town fans, if you're watching this, you can watch tonight's game against Coventry City on iFollow HTAFC. If you're a season card holder, you get access for free. If not, you can buy a match pass for £10. It's also available on Sky Sports Premier League tonight. Thank you for watching. <laughs>